Hello guys, welcome to the episode 7 of the mode tutorial. I put the missile tutorial to the last episode before the aircraft carriers came out, since making a mode for missile is much more complicated than other types of modes. As you can see, we have the missile launchers model in the thing, and you can see it is consisted by these elements, just like a turret. It has a launcher which structure is quite similar to the turret and it has a hided missile in its child object. We are going to put this missile launcher in the same thing as the last episode we have created and we are going to export them as a whole package. In here I have created a new folder for these resources of the missile. So you can see there is a thumbnail for the missile object which the size you can see here. There is a texture for the missile. And in the middle it's the models of our launcher and the missile. It's better for you to do it like me that you put the missile above the launcher. And after we have imported this model to Unity, we are going to hide this missile. So you can see these are the covers of the launcher too. When the missile has launched, it should be hided by the game. And the other parts are just like the turret. This is a barrier and this is a turret. You should need to make them to rotate at a reasonable axis. Now let's open the project again and import these three files. Then I'm going to drag the launcher's model into the thing. You can see the missile comes with a default material, but we can't use the default material directly. We are going to create our own material in the project. These are the default materials. So you right click on the project view and you choose to create a material. I'm going to name this material as miso. And you just drag this color texture to the first element. You can adjust the metallic and the smoothness freely. After that, you need to assign the materials to the every object under the miso. You can see the miso launcher's model is still prefab. Let's right click on it and choose to unpack prefab. Now it turned to a normal object in the thing. As you can see, as we rotate the barrier by the x-axis, it don't rotate with the cover. We are going to put the cover in the barrier's child object later, but now we are going to firstly to rename the child object of the missile object. I suggest you to use the same name as mine for better management. You also need to make this object like when or booster to be the child object of the missile, so they will fly with the missile rather than just stay in the launcher. If you have a booster in your missile, you must make the name to match the booster exactly, so the game will recognize it and add a procedure animation to the booster. The next step is to make the turret rotate with the Y axis and here you can see the barrier doesn't rotate with it. We are also going to make the barrier be the child object of the turret. You can see our barrier can move freely with the X axis. Now let's add an animation for the foldable one of the missile. So you can see the foldable one will rotate with the Y axis and at first it is folded and then it will be expanded to the right position. At this rotation, it is folded. Now we are going to add an animation to it. We do that by opening the window button and we click animation to open the animation button of the Unity engine. And first, let's select the missile object. You need to guarantee that and you hit create button. Feel free to name your animation. Here I just name it as missile example animation. 
So for the animation, it's all about key points or key frame. So we are going to add a property of the rotation of this wind here. You can find it like me. And first, let's add the rotation of these two winds as a status of folded. You can zoom the timeline by scrolling your mouse wheel. I'm going to add a keyframe at 0.5 second. Here I'm going to change the rotation to make them expand it. Now let's just right click on the timeline to add a keyframe. You can see as the time moves, these ones will turn the status from folded to expanded. But as you can see, it is turned to folded at the end again, so we just delete these keyframes. And you can move the end frame freely. You can also add the animation curve by right click on the keyframe. And you do that by selecting these different properties like left tangent or free smooth. You can try out different options to make your animation looks better. If we're done with the animation, so as the missile was headed at first, it will be activated with the animation once the missile is generated in the launcher. For the next step, let's open the Never Art Mode Tool window. And we are going to create a missile mode empty object. After that, you can see our missile mode object is a little different with the previous object we have created. Since missiles are more complex than other types of modes, now it's just an empty object with some components on it. Since it's very complex to move all of the child objects of our missiles model to the missile empty object, we are just going to copy paste this component from the missile empty object to our model. After we have done that, we could just delete this missile empty object. Sorry, I forgot to take this read write enabled. You must tick it for every model you import it into Unity, or it will cause a bug in the game. By using copy paste the components into our missile model, you can see the missile model's materials isn't our default material. We are going to select all of them and make them make sure they have the default material on it. From now on, it's just some classic old type of methods we have introduced in the last episode. Going to give the missile launcher an ID. Make sure you have the same ID in this component. And I'm going to give it a random name and a random description. Here's the thing, you can see uh, there is a court before the name of this launcher. What is this? It's the name of the missile that will be shown in the missile panel when we enter the game. The game will read the name automatically in the court and will delete this court and to assign the name to the missile. Also see the result in the end of this video and you could leave it alone for now and just follow me. Now we are going to adjust the collider of this missile launcher. As you can see, as uh, this mesh of the model is not on the parent object of this model, uh, we click reset and it won't match the size of our collider to our model. 
So we need to adjust it manually. Number, make the number be clean. Here I'm going to use only integers or numbers with only one decimal. Okay, so the next will be the part missile proxy component of our missile launcher. What is M target? So it is a short term of the animation target. Here our animation target is the barrier, since it will rotate to like its rotation when it goes to the launch status. Like minus 30 degrees. So we are going to put barrier into the animation target and give it a final rotation of the minus 30 degrees on the x-axis. So the anim, anim, anim time is just the time it takes to finish this animation. The maximum field just means you just assign the maximum object to the maximum field. It is used for vertical launch system. I will do a little demonstration here. If you have used the uh, missiles with a VLS launch system in the game, you can see its collider is just a very thin collider in order to make you to put this uh, missile launch system to a ship easier. But when you compare this little collider to the whole missile launcher system, it's just like a corner of an iceberg. So you put a maximum here for a rear impact effect for the calculations of the game. If you have decided to put a maximum object in your missile launcher, you remember to remove its, its mesh filter to make it look invisible, but it has a collider on it. For the missile rest field, you need to uh, firstly you disable the missile object and you drag the missile into its field. The game will make the missile to be activated automatically when it is generated in the missile launcher. Missile text is just the texture we have imported before. Also, you need to make sure you make the type of it, this texture to be the default texture. Let's first enter the count of our missile launcher here. We only have one. So let's enter one. And you can see these are some new field. For the cover part, you just drag the cover object into this field. Next field waiting for us to assign is the spawn position. So here is a little trick. You just uh, activate this missile object and you drag it to the correct position. And you right click to create a, an empty object. Name it as spawn position as mine for better management. Now let's drag the spawn position to be the child object of the missile barrier because we need to make the spawn position to rotate with the barrier, right? Or it will uh, just generate a missile in the wrong position. We're just going to drag this spawn position to the, this field. So what is pre-warmed? It is made for the certain types of missile launcher like storm launcher in the game. You will understand as long as you see this missile launcher in the game. Here I'm going to give you a picture. So this pre one property means you don't need to deactivate this missile. If you have enabled the pre warm you just need to make sure you have activated the missile object and you drag the missile object to this pre warm missile field. Missile can't just stand for the count of the missile in this launcher. Generally, you can set it to 1 or 3, but you don't want to leave it at 0, right? So the reload time is just means the reloading time. Detect collision delay is also used for the VLS launch system. 
because it is generally and you don't want to make it to hit your own maximum, right? The last property of this tube, the end rotation, if you don't leave it at zero, you just inflate some numbers to it and the hours won't be hided rather to meet the end rotation. This property could be applied to the VRS launcher systems since they have multiple launch tubes and with multiple covers. These properties under the attributes are just some basic properties for your missile launcher. So basically I won't go very detailed for these properties. You can take the molding tutorial PDF as a reference. I'm going to make the missile as subsonic. And max g-force stands for the maneuvering ability for the missile. You can find three types of warhead here, and if you choose the warhead type to be anti-air, the interception rate will take effect. If you want to change the launch sound of your missile launcher, you can take this sound mode and choose your sound file. Here we want to do it. Okay, I think all of the work has been done for this missile launcher. Now let's make a thumbnail for this model. Here I'm not just going to repeat these thumbnails, I'm going to make a new one. You can follow the same procedure as mine. I'm using the snap tools from the Windows system and uh, I have saved that image to the desktop and after that you make sure you have used an image editor tool like Photoshop to make the uh, size of these thumbnails to be a square. Here I'm going to import this image and you change this type to spirit. You can see its size is 512 by 512, which is the power of 2 and it is nice for optimization for the game. Okay, I think we are done all the job for this mode package. Let's just change its name and after that let's export this mode to our game. For exporting the mode, you select all of the objects in the thing and you hit load all objects. Then you hit save mode button and here I save it to the desktop. We put a preview image for the mode package and we are going to copy paste this folder to our game's modes folder. When we start the game it will be automatically loaded into the game. Firstly let's build a platform for placing this missile launcher. Okay, you can see we don't have a spirit in here and we're going to solve this problem. You can see our missile's thumbnail's name is not started by a P and we are just going to fix that. And we do the same process to copy this mode folder to our game. Then we restart the game to test it. Okay, since the problem has been fixed, let's place it on our platform and we enter the testing to test if it works. So one more thing, you can find this vanilla parts, they have the, their missiles on their thumbnails, you can also do that. 
I'm also going to put a VLS system on the platform to show you guys how the end rotation for the missile component works. You can see it has only a very small collider as we mentioned before. And the game tells you you don't have a target to be locked, you can type the same command as me. So you just put the key under the escape key. Then you hit X to lock our enemy. Okay, so this VLS system is not using the end rotation, rather they are using the animation target. Here you can see two problems existing in our mode missile launcher. One problem is the firstly the animation of the foldable when is keep looping and it don't have a flame on the thruster. Here we are just going to keep observing to make sure its damage calculations is right. Here we are going to solve these two problems one by one. This missile doesn't have a flame trail is because we haven't put the booster on the right hierarchy. Or well, in this situation to be more detailed, the booster is missing a child object which is named thruster. The game will auto detect whether there is an empty object named thruster located in the child objects of the booster and the game will automatically put a flame trail into the thruster. For the looping animation bug, let's open the animation file of this uh, animation and we just untick loop time so the animation won't be looping anymore. After the fix, let's just select all of these modes in the thing and we're just going to export and put the mode package into the game again. You can see here as we only have one animation target, but uh, the launcher have multiple tubes, so it could be where well we apply the end rotation of this property in the tubes. Okay, so the rocket trail works, the booster split animation works, and it seems the animation is not looping anymore. We have fixed these two problems. These are two common problems for new models, so I did them intentionally for this tutorial. Thank you guys for watching and so far this is the last episode of the mode tutorial series before the aircraft carriers came out. So for more information you can open the mode tools folder under the game. There is also a link for the online version which is always up to date. You can find some useful information which is not included in the video here. For example, like a detailed explanation for the properties of the missile launcher in this manual. So far, I hope you have learned something from this mode tutorial series, and I hope these videos could help you enjoy modding in Nevard.